We're just going to have a quick run through the auto settings. So as you can see, my camera is currently on auto. So we're going to have a look at the options you have when you're running the auto function. So with the auto function, you can hit the set button here and you'll see a range of different options come up on the screen. Now the first one is greyed out. Because you're in auto, there will be a lot of functions that you can't use. So this one's greyed out. If we just switched to program or another function and we hit that middle one, you'll see the options are available. So we'll go through those on the settings where they're relevant. So at the moment, if we hit that middle button, the first option we can mess with is the drive mode. Now this is how many pictures it's going to take when you press the shutter and potentially how long you have until the photo is taken. So if we go into this function here, you'll see the first option that's highlighted is just a single shot. So when you press your shutter down, you're just going to get a single photo. If we move along to the next option, it's high speed continuous photos. Say you've got an object running in front of the camera, you'd be able to press and hold down your shutter button and it's going to take several pictures in a row. Next option along is low speed continuous, so perhaps you don't want to take as many as fast, so you can choose the lower speed option and you'll be able to still take continuous shots. Along from that we've got the self timer and that's set to 10 seconds and you can see the option next to it is a self timer for 2 seconds. So if you needed to jump into a group photo, normally you'd need about 10 seconds to get from your camera into the group. So that's why it's got quite a long wait time. The two second option would be something like if you were doing nighttime photography and you didn't want to shake the camera when you press the shutter, then you could put it on a two second timer, press the shutter, and then it's got two seconds to stabilize itself before it takes the picture. The last option is this one, which is the continuous shots. And as you can see, it says press the info button to change the number of shots. So if we hit the info button, you see you can press right and left and change from one, or oh, from two obviously, up until 10 shots. So if you had a group photo that you wanted to take, but perhaps you didn't trust that everyone was going to have their eyes open or perhaps not everyone would be looking for that one shot. If you get it to do five shots in a row, then you're more guaranteed to get at least everyone looking in one of them. So the next option down is your image quality. So you can see here, you've got large, you've got two options for large, two for medium and one for small. You can't shoot raw in automatic. So there is a raw option, but that will be in other modes. So you see the two different options here. So you've got the smooth looking curve and the staggered one. So the smooth looking curve is a higher quality than the staggered one. So they're still large, they're still gonna fit a lot of information in them. You can see they're both 15 megapixel but the compression of the photo is different. So as you can see, as I'm moving along, you see this number here? That's how many photos you're gonna be able to fit on the card. You'd be able to fit a lot more on the staggered version, which is the lower quality one, than you could on the higher quality. I always have it on highest quality because I tend to have quite big memory cards anyway, and I don't want to regret not having it on that. But you can also go down to medium and small. So perhaps you're going on quite a long trip and you know you're going to be taking a lot of photos and you don't want to risk running out of space or perhaps you're not going to print them very large, you're not going to have them on a large screen so you're not really too worried about having them at a large size. Personally I like to always have them on a large size so that I don't regret it later on. And then the last option we've got here is full HD movie recording. So the options we've got at the bottom, we've got full HD at 50 frames per second, then we've got full HD at 25 frames per second, and then we've got HD at 50 frames per second. So other options we have on the side, we've got our flash option here, so if we press that, you'll be able to decide if you have auto flash or the flash on all the time. Don't forget that if you are using flash, you will need to raise it manually, but it will tell you that. So say I've got flash set to be on, if I raise the flash and go to take a photo, flash is going to go off automatically. Whereas if I've got it to auto, I've got quite a lot of light in this room, so when I press that button, it's going to take the picture, but the flash isn't going to go off. And just to show you the difference between those two images, that's the one with the flash, so obviously the flash wasn't needed, and that's the one without. 
So changing angle slightly, I've come up onto the area of the canvas that I have painted because I want to show you this function here. So if you press the manual focus, you're going to see that it's focusing on, on whatever it can pick up. But if we press this button up here, we can tell it where we want it to focus. So you can see it's changing it from face select on to face select off. But if I press it again, it's going to ask me to select a subject. So I'm going to put that box, I'm going to put it over his face and hit that button up there. Now every time I move the camera, that focus is staying on him. So no matter where, which angle I take the photo at, let's take a couple, it's always going to be keeping its focus on him. And we can switch that off by simply pressing this button again. You see the focus stays in the center now. And then if we went down to the manual focus option again and pressed it again, it's going to switch to that face detection, which we can turn on and off with this button here. So they say you'd never work with children or animals, but this is Max, and this is his debut. I currently have a tennis ball, which is why he's looking so very patiently. <laughs> So we're going to have a go at demonstrating the, the multi-shot function. So let's get it set up. So we're going to hit that middle button, go down to the bottom, whoops, on the drive mode, and we're going to go for high-speed continuous. Now I'm going to try multitask here. I'm going to press and hold my shutter before I start to throw the ball so that I capture the action. <laughs> He's very happy because he caught the ball. <laughs> Good boy. So as it turns out, they were completely right that trying to work with animals is impossible. I got elbowed in the eye <laughs> from him. So um, it's safe to say that wasn't the most successful test run. So you'll still be able to use it from that demo, even though my pictures are hideous, yours won't be. <laughs> There's just one more thing I wanted to mention. So if you are wanting to use drive mode and you are coming up with this message, so you can't select the multiple shots and it says, options are limited when framing assist is locked. What you've done is you've pressed this button here at the front. And what that does is it locks the framing selection that you've chosen. So all you need to do is to press this button again at the front and then when you come down to select it, you'll see that the option is available again. So if you do find that it's disappeared, that could be what you've done. So we've got our zoom focus button up the top here, and it's got an extra function where if you press it, oh, I have a lovely model here. If you press it, you can use your arrows to select which part of the person you want it to zoom into. So if you saw there, as I selected face, it zoomed into the face. If I press the next arrow, it changes it to his upper body and if I press the arrow again it'll um, try and zoom out to the whole body but it's as far as it can go zoom wise so it's quite cool that it will focus in on those areas that you've told it to and it will maintain that focus you can set it up manually or let it do it on its own so when you go to the manual setting you'll basically zoom in to where you think you want that to stay and then when you hold down the, the zoom button it'll keep the focus on the area that you've told it to Let's see so just some final thoughts on this video i recorded this back in december but unfortunately with covid and christmas and work it's all been a bit hectic i do try my best to get videos done but unfortunately just life gets in the way but hopefully this will be able to help a lot of people with the basic functions that come with the automatic setting we're going to want to be moving through all the other different settings and discovering all the other features of the camera. But hopefully this gives you quite a bit to play with. There's the, the burst mode, the self timer, there's the framing modes where you can choose you know, face, upper body, lower body, which will help a lot, especially when you're taking pictures of like moving children and things like that. It's going to be tracking its focus. So they're great features to mess around with. So anyone who's thinking that the automatic function is limited, it is to a certain degree, but there's also a lot you can do with it, especially if you're just starting out with this camera. So the next video, we're going to be looking at the program function, which 
means that there'll be a lot more features that we can play with. And hopefully I'll be able to get that out to you far sooner than the gap that we've had between the last two. I apologise again and I endeavour to get the next video out quicker. So I hope you're all staying safe. Take care and I will see you in the next video.